to this year's Engine Week. It's time to learn all about engines in aviation. So welcome to Engine Week 2022. Today I'm here in Moultrie, Georgia during the mall open house, yearly open house, and I ran into Jeff from Lycoming. So I want to talk shop about Lycoming engines. Jeff, introduce yourself. So I'm Jeff Scons from Lycoming Engines. I've been with Lycoming for about 17 years now, and I've dealt with the uh, certified and experimental side uh, for Lycoming engines uh, the whole time. Awesome, so obviously we're, we're standing in a production facility for a certified aircraft. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that first, Jeff. What, what are the offerings that uh, Lycoming has today in 2022 for, for engines? So for MAL, uh, we have the 360s and the 540s used most uh, in those aircraft, uh, but we've been around for years and years and years. And uh, so Lycoming has everything from the 235, 0235, all the way up to the I0720 and all the different engines in between there from the 320s, the 360s, 540s, uh, 580s, and we have our new electronic ignition IE2 engine as well that goes in the Technam aircraft. So what, th those are the, the numbers of the, uh, the, the engines, what is the horsepower range starting from the O235? So there's a lot of horsepower ranges. So in the O235, we can go from 115 up to 118, 118 horsepower. The 320 is usually between 150 to 160 horsepower. 360 is 180 horsepower, 200 horsepower. We also have the 390, which is 210 to 215 horsepower. 540 is 235 horsepower all the way up to 300 horsepower. 720 is 400 horsepower. 580 is 315 horsepower. And the IE2 is 325 to 350 horsepower. Wow. So yeah, there's, there's a huge range there's there. There's a huge range. Now, yep. And all of those are available both in carburation and injection or? So the smaller engines like the 235 to the 360 are all can be carbureted or fuel injected. Once you get into the higher horsepowers like the 390s or the 200 horsepower 360 and above, those are all gonna be fuel injection. Above 200 and what? Yeah, with the 360 ser 360 horsepower, I'm sorry, the 360 series. series, 200 horsepower and higher, like 390s, 540s, uh, they're all fuel injected. Also, um, I forgot though, the uh, 540 lower horsepower can be carb carbureted as well though. Okay, and what type of uh carburation is like coming using these days and also what type of injection are you using? So uh, it's a good question. So we use the carburetors from Avstar, um, but we also, uh, that's all certified. And on certified aircraft, we use Avstar. On the experimental side, we use both Avstar and Airflow Performance on the experimental side. Okay, and that is more of the, the fuel injection is Avstar making carburation these days too? So Avstar makes the carbs as well, carburetors. Okay. Um, the uh, Airflow Performance just makes fuel injection systems. Gotcha. Yeah, I visited uh, there um, a few years back. Very nice operation and very knowledgeable mm -hmm. person on that. Sure. So, all right, so that's the certified side of things. Um, let's talk Thunderbolt, which is the experimental side of things, all right? Yep. So I understand that more or less it's the same company. It's, <laughs> it's yep. the same engine. It's just paperwork, correct? It is, yeah. So it's paperwork and also price. So uh, being in this experimental market, you're, you're normally looking for a, a better aircraft, um, a better engine uh, for less expensive uh, pricing. So uh, we can do more with Thunderbolt. We can customize it, uh, your engine, with colors, electronic ignition, uh, different fuel systems uh, to, uh, and the integral part of it is we can do the port and polishing of the cylinders. We have two-man teams that build your engine. So you get a little more horsepower than normal than the certified engines. Uh, we also have, it's like a white glove treatment. So you're dealing directly with me Okay. Uh, as an AMP, IA, commercial pilot, multi-engine. As far as the customizing? Yeah, with yeah. Thunderbolt, yeah. So you're doing, uh, instead of getting um, caught up in the cogs of like combing, uh, it's like a white glove treatment with Thunderbolt. Gotcha. And the, the branding is slightly different with Thunderbolt, correct? I've seen like a carbon fiber uh, air intakes and different things of the branding of the Thunderbolts or? Yeah, so we don't do the, the uh, intakes, but we do work with customers. I'm sorry, plenums, the, the plenums that go over that, correct? Yeah, so it's mostly the airframers doing okay, that kind of okay. stuff. Uh, but they do like the uh, logos, and uh, you're, when you're, you're doing Thunderbolts, it's like you're part of the family. Right. Uh, it's a smaller, uh, it's getting bigger, but it, it was, um, uh, the guys are, are uh, excited about Thunderbolts. I'm excited about Thunderbolts, so it's exciting to be a part of that whole program. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Well, it shows well. I've interviewed a couple people with the Thunderbolt engines, mm -hmm. specifically like the Bearhawk crowd likes yes. the Thunderbolt yes, engine, sure. and that shows very well. Um, uncowed, right? <laughs> it right. looks very well uncowed. So what? Yep. Um, moving right into like the price point, it would just give a broad range. Understand that, that with our economy, things are changing so fast. But on the low end of like an O235, all the way up to a, over 200 horsepower, what is the price range of, of an engine these days? Sure. So that's a like I said, that's a tough question because things have changed dramatically in the last year. Yeah. Um, so the O235 can be anywhere in the 30s. Okay. I'll just give it like I said general. Yeah. Up to let's say the 580s. Because that's about as high as we go with like my Gullion, um, which is 315 horsepower base. Wow. Um, you're probably looking in the good 70 to 80 thousand dollar range with the 580 for the 580. And that's that's fully fuel injected and yep. all, all the bells and whistles type Correct. Yes. Yep. Nice. All right, so let's roll into the, um, the service life of these engines, being that it's a certified company that offers both certified and experimental. What is the, the lifespan of these engines? So yeah, that's a, a, that's a good question. Also with TBO times though, uh, because there are, there's a lot of customization with Thunderbolts, if you get what we call a signature series, which would be basically standard compression, uh, those TBO times will go to 2,000 hours. Okay. Uh, the 235 would go to 2,400 hours. Um, so that would be the standard TBO time of a certified engine. If you're going into higher compression, like nine to one, or a higher compression, or up to ten to one, or even eleven to one. Eleven um, to one. Yeah. Now we're talking about Reno races. Well, yeah, and also yeah, my Gullion did as well with the five eighty. Aerobatics, okay. Sure. So um, if you're starting to go into higher uh, compressions, though, uh, the TBO times come down dramatically, and the warranty does as well. Um, with Red Bull, uh, we basically said as soon as you leave the the uh, the factory, the warranty is over <laughs> because we're doing a lot of stuff to that. So sure, sure. it just depends on what the customer's looking for. Most customers do stay within the same uh, ratio for compression. And so they have a two year warranty. Um, the, so, so most customers are also worried about the uh, warranty. Uh, the warranty with the experimental side though, is you get two years to start your engine. If you start your engine within the first two years, you get two years after that. So you start say in the first year, you get two years after that, so like three years. Okay. If you don't, I know build cycles can can change depending off you know, depending on if your your uh, your daughter get married gets married or your life your gets son, in the way. Or, yeah, life gets in the way and yeah. things change. So sure. um, if it sits for longer than uh, if it goes up to two years and you don't start the engine, you get two years after that, so four years of warranty. So like I said, we understand how life goes. Um, and so we've worked that into the warranty as well. All right, so being that we have a, a factory rep here, let's talk fuels for a minute. Um, obviously the lower compression engines, I assume are more flexibility than the higher compression engines, but what does the factory recommend for, let's say the normal base, if you will, compression engines to run through the engine? So we do have a service instruction which talks about fuels and you're right. So the lower compression can take, uh, engines can take a lower octane type fuel and it's specified in our service instruction. It's on our website. Um, but as you get into the higher compressions, like the 8.9 to ones with the 390s, which you saw a lot of, or the 540s, which is higher compressions as well, we do recommend sticking with 100 low lead. Um, that's because that's what the uh, engine was certified with. We're trying to keep you safe, just keep your, your, uh, your family safe. Um, I do know a lot of people do want to use a different type of fuel. We haven't been able to prove that fuel so, but we have been able to prove 100 low lead on our engine. So in a lower octane fuels, in the lower compression engines, which is on our service instruction. We are partnering with great companies like Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, AirTech Coatings at AirTechCoatings.com, Clemens Insurance at ClemensInsurance.net, The Aviators Clinic at AviatorsClinic.com, Foxtrot 95, Calhoun County Airport at FlyFoxtrot95.com. Take a moment to go visit their websites at the links found below in the description of this video. And visit our website at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for events, our video library arranged in easy to find playlists on specific topics, affiliate products, aviation merchandise, and so much more. So stepping over to uh, an engine that's not mounted to an airplane to talk shop for a second the mechanics of it. Sure. So this is basically how an engine comes on a crate. This is uh, direct to, to mall. Obviously they just take the top off of it and this is how it is. What, um, they, don't, they don't ship them with oil. 
So what is maybe some of uh, an after installation procedure for a new engine and a break-in? Um, so that's, I get that question quite a bit as far as break-in. Uh, so you will get this, uh, this is how your engine will look when you get it from the factory. So you got the, the carb right here, or if you have a fuel injected, the fuel server would be here. On the other side will be some smaller parts that you need for the installation. Um, but as far as the engines, they get shipped with uh, preservative oil. So they can sit for up to 180 days uh, with the preservative oil inside. Uh, but there is a service instruction on how to break it in. Uh, it's uh, service instruction 1427. We do do a ground run at the factory. Uh, it's about three hours, two and a half to three hours, depending so on which- So it's sort of broken in. It is, yeah. yeah. So there's a ground breaking that's done already. Okay. We do them on all the engines we're required. To back up for one second, on the 180 days that you get this, yep. is that assuming like a normal ambient hangar that's humid and stuff like that? Or if you have a climate control, could it go beyond that? So yeah, we usually stick with 180 days, no matter what the- Because you, you have no way of knowing. We don't. Yeah. So yeah, as long as you, we don't want it sitting out like this for 180 days, we keep the box around it. But that preservative oil um, is a good oil. It's very viscous. I wouldn't turn the crankshaft at all while this is happening. Um, but we want to make sure that, uh, you're right, there's temperature variations. Um, humidity and humidity, all that, yeah. so It depends on where you're at. It could be close to the ocean, uh, but we want to stick with 180 or less um, okay. as much so, as possible. So you get this, this is the, how it appears when it shows at your door. What is included when you buy the engine? What all is attached to it? What's in the box? Sure, so on the certified side, it's gonna come with the magnetos or our light combing EIS system, electronic ignition system. We can install those for you. Uh, it's gonna include the carburetor, um, and, or the fuel injection system. Also include the starter ring gear. It does not include the exhaust at all. That's gonna be separate. Something's gonna have to get on your... You very have to very get. custom thing for airframes. Correct, yes. Yeah. And also the prop governor does not include the prop governor. You have to get that as well. If you choose to use that type of and prop. If you choose to do constant speed, correct, yes. Okay, yep. and um, what are we using for, for mags uh, per se? If we're not using electronic... Well, we'll use it for mags. And we'll yes. use it for electronic ignition these days. So we're using slick magnetos at this point uh, for all our engines on the certified side. Okay. Um, on the experimental side, we're uh, able to install e-mags or our light combing EIS system on there or the slick mags. Nice, nice. Yep. Okay. And um, do you want to roll into what it's like to break an engine in after it's been installed in an airframe and uh, the, the time and I don't know if it's a really thick book on the break-in, but maybe, uh, maybe like an overview of what that is. Sure. So I, I may talk a little fast, so I apologize for that because I, I do like talking about like combing engines, but uh, there is a specific sequence we like. So it's about okay. a three hour flight. We want to keep that uh, ground run to a minimum, um, but we want you to be safe. So basically what we want to do is start the engine up, start the engine up the first time, checking for oil leaks, for fuel leaks, or making sure your, your gauges are all reading. Uh, and then once that's all done, um, jump in the aircraft, uh, taxi on the runway and go. That flight's going to be about, like I said, three hours. First hour, you're going to fly at 75%. Second hour, you're going to fly between 65 and 75%, varying it every 10 to 15 minutes, 65 to 75%. In the last half hour, you're going to go for a full 100%, uh, staying out of the yellow arc. Um, so that's about your two and a half, three hours, and obviously you're coming back at, down. But you're going to use mineral oil to break it in. Uh, don't do any touch and goes for the first 50 hours. Um, and like I said, uh, keep also keep the CHTs as hot as possible. So, so that you're not running full rich the entire time. You're actually leaning during this this period. Uh, during the, um, it depends on your altitude. Um, you will have to lean if you're at 5,000 higher. You'll have to lean a little bit. Okay. Uh, but you normally you want to stay below 5,000 feet, so you shouldn't have to lean. I uh, just want to vary the uh, percent or the. Uh, I wasn't sure if you're, you're trying to look for a specific lean to help nope. break in getting things hotter, or you want to keep things cooler by having a, a richer. Mixture. Yeah, we want as hot as possible. Okay. See, see, keep CHEs see as hot as possible. 400, uh, over 400 if, if possible. Uh, don't go past 435. Um, but that's better. Then you should see your CHTs drop and your oil consumption will stabilize as well. Once that's all happened, hopefully it happens around 8 to 10 hours. Uh, it should be, it'll be broken in. I would still run the uh, mineral oil in for 50 hours though uh, during the break-in process. Um, and that should be, that's the break-in period. And the break-in oil you mentioned is mineral oil? Yep, use mineral oil. Once that's all done, you can get rid of the mineral oil and then put it in your straight weight or multi-grade, whichever you prefer. 
All so, right, so I think we've pretty much covered everything. Obviously, engine conversations can go on very long, so there's always more to talk about. But if you have more questions, you can get in touch with Jeff where? So my email address is probably the easiest way. I do a lot of traveling. I get to go to all these uh, fly-ins. Um, so yeah, the easiest way to be uh, my first initial, which is J. My last name is S-C-H-A-N-S at Lycoming.com. Um, or you can call me on myself, it's 570-220-7840. That's 570-220-7840. My name's Jeff Scons from Lycoming. Well, thanks for giving us a quick tour during the, uh, the mall factory open house. Thanks so much, appreciate it. Thanks for watching today's episode of Engine Week. Tune in tomorrow for the next video in our series. And we invite you right now to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss a single episode.